Jim, the process I want to demonstrate now is a process called index routing in which I'm going to make a series of dado type cuts and each cut will be guided by the previous cut so that the spacing will be consistent. Now the way that's going to work is that I've glued a spline onto this router base. In fact, I, I think this makes a point about router bases generally. This particular plunge router has a dust collecting capability and this was the original base plate for it. But the base plate was, one, small, and two, didn't give me the ability to affix a spline to it. So by simply using this as a template, I was able to, uh, to make this plywood base and then glue oh, an appropriate spline to it. So you still have the it. capacity for dust collection? Absolutely, yeah. The whole thing is, the use, utility is, is uh, actually increased because now when I do want to run against a fence, now that would have been a previous use for this, now I've sort of dedicated it by attaching the spline. What I want to do is, is make the first cut on this board and, well, first I think we have to affix it to the table and I think the double face tape is the best option for that. Now the bit I've chosen to use on this is a hinge mortising type bit which is, has a slight down spiral quality to it and that means that as I go against the end grain it will tend to uh, suppress the fibers in the cut so I won't get that fuzzy edge to the cut. This is okay because uh, even though it's driving the dust down to some extent, what it's doing, because the router has dust collection capability, the dust is being sucked away anyhow. And uh, uh, the spline is not quite as thick as the router bit is deep. In this case, the router is a little more than a quarter of an inch deep. The stock is half inch thick. But the spline is somewhat less than that because it's vital that the spline fill a half inch a slot very snugly, but it doesn't have to touch the bottom. In fact, if it did, it would create a, the possibility of inaccuracy because as dust or irregularities accumulate in the bottom of there, I don't want those to be telegraphed into the next it would lift dado. The, it would lift the router off. It would lift it up off the base. Sure. So anyway, when I make this first cut, I'm a little, it's a little bit precarious. I'm going to draw the router to me so that the cutting action of the bit draws the spline tight up against the edge, makes it work like a fence, uh, but it's a little tippy in that, at that moment, so I'm going to take an, another scrap of wood of the same thickness just as a rest. Sure. Once I get going, I won't need this rest any longer. Let's pry this off. Double sided tape works well. They're very well, very well. You now as you can see, there's a little fuzz on these entry holes, but over here on the back side there's actual blowout. So when I finish with this project I can trim that away. Oh I see. Yeah. Now, I, I'm not, I've got a, a, a sequence here in which the, the voids are, are evenly spaced uh, by their own thickness. Mm -hmm. That's to say they're half inch grooves with half inch material remaining between. That's not necessarily so. I could take this spline and move it closer to the bit and in the process I would have the half inch slots cut by the, by the router bit and I would have smaller or alternatively by moving a spline away I could have larger. Mm -hmm. So that if you were going to make dental molding you could put down a long piece of stock, run these sequentially mm -hmm. and then just 
saw by sawing on the table saw, sawing these off, you could make miles perfect. of dental sure, molding. Sure, that'd be the perfect way. And you wouldn't have chip out because you're ripping it in the middle of the stock. Exactly, and then this, this chipped out edge would be waste. Boy, I like that. Yeah. But for our purposes today, what I want to do is turn this into trivets. That would be, they could be used as trivets or by alternatively you could be using this to make, say, a grill work for a pie safe. Uh, so we'll put the tape on the other side and we'll continue by doing routes lengthwise on this side. There'll be no blowout where they intersect with the, with the original uh, grooves. Mm -hmm. Now, in preparation for that, I have made those dados just slightly deeper than, than half the thickness of the stock, by about a 30 second. I see. So the piercing will intersect out. Okay. Perfectly, yeah. And the fact that we're going to be cutting these lengthwise with the grain uh, there should be, they should be very clean cuts without the issue of, of blowout. Mm have to be careful here for fear of cracking. Sure. When you think about how much stock has been removed, I think this the dust collecting feature of the of the router is enormously effective. When we ran lengthwise, the chips tended to be coarser and the coarser ones remained behind. But given that this is mahogany, I don't have any fine dust. No, True. no fine dust issue at all. I'm amazed with the cleanliness of the cuts, and there's no, there's no chip out. There's no fuzzy edge. I mean, everything is as clean as I've ever seen. Yeah, I think a fresh inch mortising bit is really magic in cuts like this. Really, that is, smooth that is. bottom, uh, clean edges, sharp corners. John, in a piercing operation like this, is there any sequence that's in, that's important? Well, definitely, you want to do the cross grain cuts first because that way they're backed up very cleanly because uh, there's always a tendency for the grain to, to chip out and splinter as the router passes through. But when you go lengthwise as the second, then there's no, sure. there's no uh, similar danger of splintering and it makes a cleaner operation. Okay. 